effort, Mr. Dave Zangaro on the Comcast Business Hotline. How you doing today, Dave? I'm doing well, man. How are you? Doing pretty well. We appreciate you coming on. Uh, let's start, though, with the injury report. Devontae Smith, I guess not overly surprising, but he's out. Um, obviously, it's a loss for the Eagles, but do you think that they should be able to overcome it for one game? Yeah, I think so. Obviously, it's not ideal to lose one of their better players, but he's been dealing with this hamstring injury for a while now. Watched him limp off the field last Thursday night after the Commanders game. So, uh, honestly, kind of surprised he was able to play as long as he was, uh, playing through a soft tissue injury like that. But, yeah, after him missing the week of practice, not a surprise that he's out. Uh, it's a shame they're going to miss him in this game because I think they can throw the football against the Rams, but they can still do that without him. I think Dallas Goddard has a chance for a big game. A.J. Brown has the opportunity to have a big game. Uh, I still think they're going to like those mismatches against the Rams' corners, uh, and as long as the offensive line holds up against a pretty good front, they should be able to throw the ball. All right, well, when, when you look at this matchup, I think the one thing that really sticks out to us is Puka Nakua and uh, – um, who am I thinking? A Cooper Cup. Cooper, Cooper Cup. Cup going up against Quinion Mitchell and uh, and and uh, wow, am I blanking today? And Slay and DeGene. Slay and DeGene. My goodness, I'm sorry. It, 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 what? How? How big is that? Is that matchup going to be in this game? Yeah, it's big, and I think it's the one you think of first when you're talking about this game. The nice thing, Ricky, is if, if you forget again, it's just likely a Cooper that you're looking for uh, in this matchup because. Uh, I think that's one of the big ones we're watching in this game is inside. Cooper Cup plays about like 75% of his snaps inside, and that's obviously where Cooper Regime is going to have to face him. Puka Nakua, they move all over, left, right. He's, you know, he's running through the formation. He's got him doing some crazy stuff. But uh, that offense is completely different with those two guys on the field early in the season. It really looked like Matthew Stafford was just hoping to stay healthy and wait for these guys to come back. Uh, and now that they are, they, they are a much better offense. Uh, and, and the fun part about this matchup is that you have Sean McVay's offense, which is, is kind of known for all the bells and whistles, the, the pre-snap motion, a uh, ton of pre-snap motion, like 80% of their plays. And typically when you're facing a defense as young as the Eagles is, like you worry about, is that going to trip them up? Are they going to get lost in the eye candy of it all? Uh, the one thing I can say about this Eagles defense is even though they're young, they've been so disciplined this year. They've been excellent. Like you watch them in zone coverage, passing off these zones. They look like they've been playing together for a really long time, and it, it has been kind of seamless. So I think that's a really fun matchup in this game because uh, it's a chance for the Eagles defense to show just how far they've come. Uh, and I feel pretty confident with them in this game, and it's not like they're going to now let up a touchdown in this game. I think the Rams have a good offense, but I do think they'll be able to, to hold up and, and give their team a really good chance to win. Uh, Dave, uh, switch it over to the defensive line for a moment. Obviously, Huff officially goes on to IR today, and now uh, it leads right into your story about Nolan Smith explaining why he always gives maximum effort. Do you expect to see more snaps from Nolan Smith with Huff out? Yeah, I think he'll get a little bit more. He was already getting more, honestly. Yeah. Like, very yeah. quietly, uh, Bryce Huff had taken a step back. And it, it did kind of fall in line with the injury. But I also kind of wonder if that wouldn't have happened naturally because he hadn't been very productive. Nolan has started four of the last five games. He's started the last three. So uh, he is just a starter on this team right now. And he's played really well. He's starting to get that production. Uh, and I wrote that story this week because Nick Sirianni was so complimentary of Nolan about his his, uh, his energy and his effort because that stuff showed up way before the production did. And it, it really endeared him to his teammates, to his coaches. I mean, you watch him play. I mean, you watch the tape. Like, he's in plays that he shouldn't be in. You know, it's, it's a play that's 20 yards away from him. And by the end of the play, he's in the frame. So uh, he always gives Max effort, and it's starting to pay off a little bit. He's starting to turn a corner. He had that nice sack against Washington on third down a, a week and a half ago. That was a big play for him. He's already up to three and a half sacks, which uh, if you remember, guys, he was not super productive in college. His, his season high in at Georgia was three and a half sacks. So it's a good sign for him that he's able to produce. Uh, he'll play a little bit more in the absence of Bryce Huff, but I also expect to see more Jalen Hunt, the third-round pick. Really raw player, but they like him behind the scenes. They think he has some explosion, some athleticism. 
there were a lot of traits that they liked when they drafted him, and they're seeing those in practice. So uh, it'll be fun to see him get a little bit more burn on game day. Yeah, you, you put up stories on uh, NBC Sports Philadelphia, and this is interesting to me because you put up Vic Fangio versus Matthew Stafford and Sean McVay. Why don't you explain to us what you mean by that? Yeah, it's really about this offense and the structure of it. Uh, and Vic was asked this week about all of his success against McVay, which is true, but it has been a long time. You think back to, uh, I think it was that 2018 season when that Rams offense was kind of taking the NFL by storm and Vic was with Chicago and really shut them down. And it kind of became a blueprint for how to slow down this McVay offense and uh, I still think that holds true. I know Vic tried to downplay it and said it's been a long time since I faced McVay, and that is true. That's the last time he did it. But I do think he has a really good sense of how to slow this offense down. And we saw it get like uh, mimicked by a lot of defenses around the league trying to do exactly what Fangio was able to do. So uh, that's the chess match in this game that's going to be really fun to watch. Let's we'll speak with Dave Zagaro. He does a tremendous job. Covering the Eagles for NBC Sports, Philadelphia. Um, I want to talk about the, the snap count thing, and it's really just about whether or not Jalen Carter can hold up over the long haul. I'm not worried about him coming off the mini buy. He probably feels pretty darn good right now. I had the extra time off. But if he continues to have to log heavy, heavy snaps, and now with this team seemingly having late January, February aspirations, now that they're at eight and two. Could all these snaps end up catching up to him? Not, I'm not saying Sunday night against the Rams, but over the long haul, if they don't find a way to get him some rest. Yeah, it, it's a, a fascinating question because I don't know the answer to it. I don't think anyone really does because he hasn't played this many snaps in a season. I really do think it's a testament to how hard he worked in the off season to get his body ready for this kind of workload. And, and this was on our radar pretty early with Vic Fangio. You even look at last year with Miami, Christian Wilkins ended up playing a ton. And it is kind of in conflict with what the Eagles have done in recent seasons. They've been a team that really likes to rotate and keep guys fresh. Uh, But if Vic has a defensive tackle he thinks needs to be out there, he's going to put him out there. So uh, I don't think that's going to change. And it's just about Carter making sure he's able to, to do the little things you know, Monday through Friday to get his body ready to play on the weekend. Uh, so far, he's been able to do that. He's been really productive. I, I think, you know, if you look at those 66 snaps against the commanders and you saw some sort of tail off, there'd be a, a lot of concern right now, but there wasn't. I mean, he played that entire game and he was disruptive from the first snap to the last snap. Uh, and they need that from him. You know, coming into the season, I had him listed as the most important player on that defense. And I still think that holds true, uh, especially when you look at this team that they don't have great edge rushers, right? Like they have solid edge rushers. We're getting the decent production from guys like Josh Sweat and Nolan Smith and Brandon Graham. They don't have a Hassan Reddick anymore to take over games. It needs to happen from the interior. It needs to happen from Jalen Carter. He's been able to do that so far, but I get your concern. Uh, and we just don't know the answer. Like it, it might affect him at some point in January, but I don't think they're going to change course. I think they're going to monitor it. I think they're going to keep an eye on him, but I expect him to play as much as he has all year. How do you think the Elliott Shanks uh, are going to play on Nick Sirianni's mind on Sunday night? Yeah, it's a good question. I I think Nick already this season has really kind of uh, leaned aggressive in some fourth down situation, so I don't know if it's going to affect it that much maybe there's a moment here or there i think it's a little different when you're in a dome i think they'll have no problem giving him those opportunities now what happens next week when they're in baltimore or after that when uh you're back at the link or in a fedex field i think those things are going to be on his mind a little bit but if there's one player on the scene who's kind of built up some equity and, and deserves the chance to, to kick his way out of it i do think it is jake elliott uh, with that said, it wasn't just one bad game. I mean, he hasn't made a kick over 50 yards this season. So uh, it's not panic time with him. I, I think he's been good enough in a long enough stretch of his career that you should feel pretty confident about him. But it's on my radar for sure. And I, I think it's on theirs because uh, you get into January and these games are going to get tighter. You, you need a kicker you can rely on. I still think that's going to be Jake Elliott, but we got to see it. Well, Dave, you know, that concludes the Eagles portion of this uh, conversation. 
But but one thing, apparently you've been uh, sandbagging us and not being honest. Someone informed me that you're the fifth leading scorer in the Medford's Med Hockey League. What? And you're tearing <laughs> it up. Oh, yeah, somebody reached out to me earlier today. Come on. Somebody from high school. You're a puck man. You're out here playing very well in the Medford uh, Men's Hockey League. How come you didn't mention any of this, Dave? You're out there. You are there lighting the lamp. Yeah, you know, guys, I don't have a lot of concern about Jalen Carter's health. I have a lot of concern about my health uh, and making it through a season. The hamstring injuries don't get any easier as you get older. Uh, mostly my warm-ups these days are just stretching. Just stretch until it's time to, to play the game. And if I do that, I might be okay. I'm, I'm kind of psyched for you. Yeah, you got I'm, yourself oh yeah. out on the ice. Man, it's on the, they got a whole website going where they have the statistics posted. No way. Yes, I'm looking at it. So far this season. All right, Dave Zangaro plays for the Grizzlies. Five goals, six assists, 11 points, fifth best in the league. What is this? I what, what, what is this, Dave? What is this? Apparently, Dave, you're a lamplighter. Yeah, lead the league is Zach Sawyer, also of the Grizzlies, with 17 goals and 12 assists. But fifth, look at you. You're like a line two guy out there, Dave. We didn't even know that. In all seriousness, that's pretty cool. That's uh, awesome. Safe travels out to L.A., um, and uh, we'll talk to you ne- um, next week. <laughs> All right, guys. Take care. I right, appreciate it. That's Dave Zangaro on the Comcast Business Hotline.